again. So several people have asked me for tips and tricks for studying anatomy and for doing well in my classes. And so they've asked me, hey, do you have any suggestions? Yes. Yes, I do have some suggestions. So let me give you some of uh, some things that I think will help you, not only in my class, but in all of your classes, because a lot of my suggestions actually apply to all uh, college courses, really. Uh, the, except the first one. Uh, the first one I, I would say, the first thing I'd say is study my prezies, my prezi presentations. The, when I'm writing the test, the, the test questions come straight off the prezies. Okay, so I have a computer with two screens, and I'm I've got my presentation up on one screen. I've got uh, my test that I'm writing on the other screen, and I pull up a slide on a presentation, and I come up with a test question, and then I go to another slide. And I come up with another test question, and I go to another slide, the next slide, and I write another test question. And so I'm literally just looking at my slides and writing test questions from that. And so what I would recommend is not just to study my prezies, but to do the exact same thing. When you're studying my prezies, you know, go to a slide and don't just, you know, try to memorize what's on the slide and to, you know, that sort of thing. Actually try to write a test question, maybe just, you know, a multiple choice question, but write a multiple choice question, pull up, you know, a slide, write a multiple choice question, A, B, C, D, one answer right, three answers are wrong. And you know what? The odds are you're probably going to come up with a test question that's very similar to the one I'm coming up with. So if you go through my prezies and create test questions of your own, you're probably going to come up with test questions that look a lot like the ones that I write. So that's my first suggestion. That one, of course, is kind of specific to me and my class, my classes. But let me give you some other suggestions about just things that help people help you learn in general. Number one, don't study alone all the time. Obviously, you're going to study alone sometimes. Maybe most of the time you're going to be studying alone. But carve out some time. Carve out some hours in your week to study with another person or with a small group. Okay, so it's really important that you try not to be a lone ranger in my anatomy courses. Can you do it by yourself? Yes, but you'll probably do much better and it'll be much easier if you study with another person. There's even some, you know, there's some scripture that goes with this. One can set a thousand to flight, but two can set 10,000 to flight, for example. Or, you know, woe is the person you know, who falls down and has no one to help them up. But when you have another person, they can help you when you fall or you can snuggle up together and stay warm. But the person who's alone is going to be cold. You know, those ideas in scripture that two can do more than one. And it's not just additive, it's it's exponential, right? So getting together with a study partner or a small study group, I think is essential, but you've got to do it right, right? If you get into the wrong group, and all everybody does is chit chat about this, that, and the other, and there's not a lot of time spent on anatomy, that's the wrong group. So you need to get people who are serious about anatomy, who want to learn, but getting together with other people, I think, is a very, very good way to study. And I'm going to give, I'm going to tell you why. Here's the main reason why studying with another person or studying with a group is useful. How do you, let's say you have an idea. And let me, let me, let me, let me phrase it this way. What, how, what is the main way that you get information into your head? What are the, what's the main way that you learn something? The main ways, the two main ways that we learn something is through our eyes and our ears. Okay. We, we see things and we learn about them. We hear things and we learn about them. And when you think about it, that's what you're doing in a lecture when you take a college course. You're sitting in a classroom and you're looking at the professor and you're looking at his his or her presentations up on the screen and you're seeing things with your eyes and the professor is talking and explaining things to you and you're hearing them with your ears and all of this information is coming in through your eyes and your ears. The problem is we know enough about the human brain to know that the retention in that scenario is pretty is pretty small. The amount that you retain is pretty low. I mean, it goes in one eye and out the other. It goes in one ear and out the other, right? So 95% of what you're seeing and hearing 
you're not retaining. Now let me go back to this other question. Let's say you have an idea. Uh, how do you share that idea with the rest of the world? There's basically two main ways that you would do that. With your hand and your mouth. So you can write your ideas down. You can write it down, maybe write a book. Or you can tell other people, maybe give lectures, go around telling people what your ideas are. But those are the two main ways. Your hand and your mouth are the main ways that you share information. And it turns out, there's a lot of research on this now, it turns out that the more you use your hand and your mouth, the more the ideas in your head really get crystallized. And so when you're trying to learn something, yeah, initially this information or mainly this information is coming in through your eyes and your ears, but when you regurgitate that information through your hand and your mouth, you retain a lot more of it. It sticks into your brain. And one of the reasons why working in a study group or with another person is that you are employing your hands and your mouth more because you're engaging with other people than you would be doing alone. And there's a saying that kind of goes along with this too. And that, that saying is this, the best way to learn is to teach. The best way to learn is to teach. I've been a student for many years and I've been a teacher for many years and I can tell you that saying is 100% true. The best way to learn is to teach. Now, why is it that the teacher is doing the most learning? It's because the teacher is doing the most talking and the teacher is maybe writing things on the board and doing the most writing. The teacher is using their hand and their mouth and you're just sitting there in a chair using your eyes and your ears. So the whole classroom is kind of set up all wrong for learning where you've got 200 people in a room using their eyes and your ears and one person in the front of the room using their hands and their mouth and that one person in the front of the room is doing most of the learning. All right, so anyway, you need to invert that if you can. Get into a study group and if you're in a study group, the goal is not to go and listen to other people. Okay, you use your ears and your eyes in the classroom. When you're with your study group, that's when you want to use your hand and your mouth. So you guys need to take turns teaching one another because the person who's doing the teaching is the one who's doing most of the learning as well. So you're going to take turns teaching each other, using your hand and your mouth, write things on the board, draw things out. This is anatomy. You can draw the structures that we're talking about, draw them and label them, that sort of thing. All right, so the point is get with other people, use your, use your mouth and your hand. Even if you can't get in a study group when you want to, call up somebody on the phone. Okay, FaceTime your sister, your brother, your mom, your dad and say, hey, you know what? I learned something in anatomy. Can I explain it to you? Give me 10 minutes to explain this to you. And that will go a long way to helping you really crystallize your understanding of anatomy and physiology. Okay, and finally, I want to talk about something called levels of understanding. There are different levels of understanding. Uh, if you imagine, you know, maybe on a bar graph, you've got one, you've got, well, you've got level zero. Let's just call them one, two, three. You've got level zero. That's where you know nothing at all. Okay. That is like if you put me into the cockpit of a Boeing 747 and tell me to fly it, I'm, I'm going to be looking at, you know, what seems like hundreds of gauges. Okay. I have no idea what any of them are for. There's no way I could do this. There's no way I could fly this plane. I, I know zero. Or if you ask me to speak, you know, Russian or German or something, these are languages that I don't even know that I know a single word not one word of Russian. Okay, so I'm at level zero. Now, none of you really are at level zero when it comes to anatomy and physiology, I guarantee you. But as you're taking this course, you're going to find yourself at level one, but what you need to be is level two. Now, what is level one understanding? Level one understanding is when you're not at zero. It's not that you know nothing. It's when, that, it's when someone can talk to you about the subject matter and you can understand it. All right, so I can talk to you about anatomy and physiology, and you're at a level where you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so you feel like you're knowing it. You feel like you really know it, but what what you actually but you're actually at level one understanding. I'm doing the talking. I'm doing the explaining. You're doing the listening. Okay, so this is kind of going back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago. You're doing the listening. You are understanding. It's not as if I'm saying something that you don't understand. Or, you know, that's completely foreign to you. You, you. you understand it. You comprehend it. Okay, but you're at level one understanding. Now, what's the difference between level one and level two? Level two is 
hearing it and understanding it. Uh, level one is hearing it and understanding it. Level two is to be able to speak it and explain it. And that's a whole different ball game. So it's one thing for me, let's just take muscle contraction, for example. There's a whole series of steps that take place in muscle contraction. I've listed them out once and I came up with like over 30. So there's over 30 steps involved in muscle contraction. Step one, step two, step three, step 30, right? I, it, it, after we've talked about muscle contraction in class, okay, and spent some time going over it, then I can talk to you about those steps and you understand it, okay? It's nothing that you haven't heard before. It's nothing that you don't comprehend. But then when I turn the tables and I ask you, hey, now you list for me the 30 steps of muscle contraction. You might get to step two or three or four and then find yourself stuck. And the simple matter is, even though you understand it when I say it, you don't understand it at a deep enough level for you to say it, for you to explain it. And guess what? That's where you have to be when you're taking a test. When it's just you and a piece of paper, a pencil in your head, you better be able to explain it. You better be at level two because there's no one there to talk it to you. There's no one there to explain it to you. There's, it's not any listening with your ears anymore or looking at a diagram with your eyes anymore. Now it is you and you have to spit it out of your own brain with no help. That is level two understanding. And you need to get there before you take the test, okay? Not realize when you take the test, hey, I'm at level one, but I'm not at level two. So you need to be able to get with another person and explain to them things that we're learning in our anatomy class and you teach them. And eventually you want to be able to teach it. I mean, at first you may have to pull up our notes, pull up your notes and, and kind of help you get through it. But the goal is to be able to explain these things and, uh, you know, explain these processes or this anatomy or whatever without having to reference a book, without having to look things up. You know, go from start to finish all on your own. And if you can do that in a study group or with a study partner, then you're ready to do that on the test. So anyway, those are some things that I, I would do. And these things, a lot of these things you can do in all of your classes, not just my class. But don't study alone. Speak it and write it. Don't just hear it and see it. Get to level to understanding don't be tricked just because you're at level one and you can read it in the book and understand it or you can see it on a video and understand it no put all of that stuff away and then do it with a blank sheet of paper and make sure you're at level two all right those are my suggestions i hope they're helpful for you